Hi, my name is Ron Timmerhin and I'm a professional photographer based here in London and a very warm welcome to my Cityscape Masterclass in collaboration with Sony and Wex. I hope you enjoy. Today we will be discussing everything from location scouting so that you can find unique vantage points to shoot your city. We'll be talking about compositional techniques, talking about the settings that you'll use on your camera and also go over gear and the equipment that I like to use to capture my city. We're going to talk about gear and these are my everyday tools that I use to shoot cityscapes. First off is the body, obviously. Um, I like to run around with the Alpha 7C. As you can see it's really small but it's also full frame and really powerful and so it keeps my kit bag light which I love. On the body right now I have the 40mm f2.5 lens and it's one of Sony's latest lenses and also one of their most compact lenses. I also run around with the Sony 24mm f2.8 and I absolutely love this lens. It's part of the same compact series as the 40mm and as you can see it's really small so although I have a 24mm f1.4 this gives me more flexibility when I'm running around a city. I also have another prime lens, which is the 35mm f1.4. Uh, I absolutely love this lens. This is my go-to lens for most things when it comes to cityscape, portraiture, landscape. Uh, it's a very, very versatile lens. And if I could run around with just one lens, it would be this lens right here. Now, another of my favorite lenses is the 16 to 35 f2.8. I've had this lens for a very long time and I find it one of the most fun lenses to use when shooting cityscapes. Again, it has such versatility, you can shoot really wide, but you can also zoom in and shoot at 35mm if you want to shoot portraits. Um, yeah, very, very fun lens just to walk around the city with, so I recommend everyone have this in the arsenal. And lastly, 70 to 200 Now, you might be thinking that's a strange one to have for cityscape photography, but over the years I've learned that this lens gives beautiful compression and it can make buildings look a lot closer together than they actually are. And so for that reason and that reason only, I love this lens. Of course it's quite heavy and big, but I think it's a special lens that can be used in very interesting ways. So that's bodies and lenses done. Now I'm going to talk about the accessories that I like to carry with me every day. Something that I often carry around with me is a tripod. Now, a tripod is something that I think all photographers should own. They come in very, very handy. Uh, their sole purpose is to keep your camera as stable as possible. And so when it comes to shooting cityscapes, I use this in low light situations. This means that I can shoot at a longer shutter speed, which means that my ISO can stay low, meaning that I have cleaner, less noisy images. Something else that I carry, which is really small, but really useful are lens wipes. Lens wipes are really important. Um, I love these ones by Zeiss. I carry them everywhere. Um, you can get big packs of 200 for very, very cheap and um, they keep your lenses clean, which is very important. You don't want any finger marks or dust or anything on your lenses. Um, lens wipes, definitely have those. Another accessory I like to play around with are filters. And filters can give you really interesting results as well. Um, I use filters by Tiffin. There are other brands out there, but for me, Tiffin are the best. And um, for example, this one in particular is an ND filter that I can put on my 35 millimeter lens. And what that does is it darkens um, the exposure that goes into your camera, which means that you can shoot at slower shutter speeds during the day, which can create some really interesting effects like water being completely smooth. So filters are also um, good accessories to have in your toolkit. And so there you have it, that's what's in my bag. I normally like to switch it up, but those are my go-to lenses and my go-to equipment that I shoot regularly with. Um, of course, when you're shooting different subjects, switch it up, experiment, have fun. But I find these tools work really, really well for me. The first location we're at is on the Millennium Bridge, a very popular um, cityscape photography location. But the reason it's so popular is it has lovely leading lines which lead up to St Paul's, which is directly in the centre of the frame. Now, for those of you who don't know what leading lines are, leading lines are lines that draw your eye through the frame to a centre point. Um, a very easy but very powerful compositional technique. Uh, something else I like to do here is use the rule of thirds. 
Now on your camera, you can set up a grid which has the rule of thirds. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to put the horizon on either the lower third or the upper third, just to make your photo look a bit more interesting. So a question I often get asked is, how do I get my photo so symmetrical? And there are actually indications in the architecture itself. So where I'm standing right now, if you look at the floor, there are seven pavements or seven tiles on the floor. So I'm gonna position myself on the fourth one so that there are three to the left and the right of me. Very simple, but that just gives you an indication that you are bang center of your environment. Our next location is One New Change, located in St Paul's region. And here is a great example of why it's important to look up. I love this look up here. The architecture is amazing. And um, this is a very good reason to have a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on you as well. That wide angle gives you enough flexibility to capture the entirety of the scene in. And um, you can see the results for yourself. Let's talk a little bit about settings. I personally like to shoot anywhere between f8 and f16 when I'm capturing cityscapes. The reason being is that I like to have everything in my frame as sharp as possible so that the viewer can clearly see what's going on. I find that I shoot f8 when I'm hand holding the camera and then up to f16 when I'm using a tripod. When it comes to shutter speed and I'm shooting handheld, I like to shoot at around 1 100th of a second or faster. If I shoot any slower than this, then I find that my images might be a little bit blurry due to some camera shake. Sony cameras do have in-body stabilization built in, which is very helpful, and it means you can slow your shutter speed down ever so slightly. However, just to be safe, I like to keep it 1 100th or faster. As for ISO, I like to keep this number as low as possible, whilst having a correct exposure for my scene. The lower your ISO, the cleaner your images are going to be, if you start raising your ISO too high, then you'll start introducing noise into your images and your overall sharpness and clarity is going to be lost. A street photography tip that I like to use is called fishing. Now what fishing is, is getting your composition ready and waiting for a subject to walk into frame. So for example, this location here, I'm getting my camera ready, I've got my comp composition as I like it, all I've got to do now is wait for someone to walk into frame. We're at our final location now, which is just outside of Tower of Bridge. And um, yeah, we've caught luck and it's a really, really beautiful sunset. Now, although I love the view as it is, we can make it a little bit more interesting by using ND filters. So this ND filter is gonna stop down by a few stops of light, meaning that we can slow our shutter speed down even further to get that really silky smooth water that we all love. To minimize camera shake even further when using a tripod, I like to set a self timer of two seconds. So it means that when I'm pressing the shutter button, there's a delay of two seconds, meaning that my finger is not gonna interfere with the camera. A top tip for exposing your photos correctly is to actually underexpose very slightly. I like to underexpose by maybe a third of a stop to half a stop. That way I retain the details and the highlights. Now, you always want to retain details in the highlights because when it comes to editing, it's a lot easier to bring back the shadows than it is to bring back the highlights. Once highlights are overexposed, they're gone forever. Sometimes it might be tricky to get your exposure right in camera with just one single exposure. So I like to use a technique called exposure blending or exposure stacking. And what you do is you take three to five or even nine different exposures and in post-production, you then merge them together. So you have details retained in the shadows, the mids, and the highlights. For example, with this image that I'm capturing now, because there is a lot of detail in the shadows, but there's also details in the highlights, I'm gonna shoot five different exposures and then merge them together in Photoshop in post-production. <laughs>